Excellent. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Alicia. I'm the Communications Director at Deed off camera today due to some <laughs> internet issues, uh, but happy to have you all join us today for September jobs numbers. A couple housekeeping items, if you could please keep your devices muted, that'll help with sound. If you have any technical issues, um, please reach out to Dawn. Her uh, email address will be in the chat there. And then we welcome your questions and um, inquiries at the end after the commissioner and Angelina have gone over the numbers for this month. So Matt, you're in a, a new connection or in a, in a new place today. I'll turn it over to you, Commissioner Verilek. Thanks, Alicia. Thanks everybody for joining today to talk about the most recent employment data. And in reference to your uh, mention of my location, Alicia, it's a new place, but also an old place for me. I'm coming to you from the um, gorgeous campus of Carleton College, my alma mater here in Northfield. So let's get into the data. Uh, pleased to report that this was another very strong month for jobs in Minnesota. Specifically, as you can see, Minnesota employers added 6,300 new jobs in the month of September. On a percentage basis, Minnesota job growth in September was 0.2%, right on par with the national rate. And this was our third month in a row of net job growth. And then if you look over the annual time scale, we've had net growth in nine out of the last 12 months. In percentage terms, our over the year growth is 1.3%, and that is just slightly off the national pace of 1.5%. Our strong wage growth continued this month as well, with wages growing faster for Minnesota workers than they did in the nation as a whole, and more than uh, twice as fast as inflation grew. Specifically, the average private sector hourly wage is now $38 on the nose in Minnesota, uh, and that's an increase of 4.9% over the year. Nationally, wage growth was 4.6%. And then for comparison to inflation, using the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, common measure of inflation, um, that rose 2.4%. So again, a good comparison to the 4.9% uh, wage growth. And so this is good news for a variety of reasons, including the fact that now consumers have greater purchasing power. Also, the fact that inflation is getting close to the Fed's target means they have felt latitude to begin lowering interest rates, which we saw recently, and that will have a stimulating effect on the economy. Moving on to the unemployment rate, we ticked up 0.1% over the month, landing at a current rate of 3.4%. That remains very low, however, and is below the national unemployment rate of 4.1%. And then on to the size of the labor force, we were essentially flat over the month with a net increase of 620, but against the total size of the labor force in the neighborhood of 3 million, uh, 620 is, is basically flat, like we said. And as we've also said in previous months, our labor force does need growth in order to power more hiring and thus overall economic growth. And so this remains an area of focus for DEED, which we will touch on uh, in more detail in a moment. But overall, very strong jobs report with some great news in it. Strong job gains again, continued demand for our workers, which basically illustrates solid demand for the goods and services that our state's employers produce. I want to again emphasize that fast wage growth means Minnesota workers are bringing home more pay at more than twice the rate of inflation. And this is especially encouraging news for everyone who's been reminded of inflation during trips to the grocery store, the gas station, and elsewhere. And I'll just wrap up my opening remarks by emphasizing the deed and partnership with others inside and outside of government is committed to maintaining and building our building on our economic momentum. And some of the ways we do that include focusing on high growth sectors and by increasing the number of workers qualified to work in high demand, high pay jobs. And for example, during Manufacturing Month and National Disability Employment Awareness Month here in October, we are focused on celebrating and bolstering the manufacturing industry, which is of course a critical backbone of our state's economy and increasing the number of skilled and work ready Minnesotans from all communities in the labor force. So with that, I'll hand things off to Labor Market Information Director Angelina Nguyen for a deeper dive on the details of this month's report. Over to you, Angelina. Thank you, Commissioner Verilak. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to go over job details by super sector now. So first looking at over the month uh, job change. So four super sectors in Minnesota gained jobs uh, on a seasonally adjusted basis. Three saw no change and four super sectors lost jobs. 
So I'm going to start with the gainers in the order of number of jobs uh, gained. So government led with 3,600 jobs, up 0.8%. Nexus Professional and Business Services, uh, they gained 2,300 jobs, up 0.6%. Uh, following that, Education and Health Services gained 1,600 jobs, up 0.3%. And lastly, Trade, Transportation, and Utilities gained 1,200 jobs, up 0.2%. So those are our gainers. Uh, the super sectors that did not saw any change over the month were mining and logging, construction, and leisure and hospitality. And the four super sectors that lost jobs over the month um, in the order of number of jobs lost. So financial activities uh, lost the most, uh, 700 jobs down 0.4%. Information lost 600 jobs down 1.4%. Other services lost 600 jobs down 0.5%. And manufacturing lost 500 jobs down 0.2%. So overall, the gains were bigger than the losses. So in total, Minnesota gained 6,300 jobs in the last month, um, seasonally adjusted, and that translates to a 0.2% growth rate, as the Commissioner of Rarelec had mentioned. Um, our private sector gained 2,700 jobs, uh, up 0.1%. The prior month's report uh, for August, uh, seasonally adjusted job growth was revised down um, 2,400 jobs. So the final estimate is we gained uh, Minnesota gained 12,000 jobs between July and August, rather than the uh, originally reported 14,400 jobs. Next, we're going to look at the labor force. Uh, our labor force size uh, grew a tiny, tiny bit, uh, 620 people over the month. Um, but as uh, the commissioner has mentioned, in the context of uh, almost 3.1 million in the labor force, that is a, um, a tiny change. Um, the number over the month, the number of employed uh, decreased by about 1,700 people, and the number of unemployed increased by about uh, 2,300 people. Uh, so, so in the long terms coming out of the pandemic, our labor force is still about 37,200 people smaller than it was uh, pre-pandemic. Our labor force participation rate stayed uh, at 67.7% for the third month in a row now. And um, overall, it has hovered around 68% for years um, since uh, we recovered from the pandemic. And then uh, next, I'm going to look at uh, job change by super sector over the year. Um, so over the year, Minnesota's growth rate is still steady. Um, we gained more than 37,500 jobs, uh, which is a 1.3% growth rate. Uh, for comparison, the U.S. Uh, over the year growth rate was 1.5%. Our uh, private sector gained more than 16,000 jobs, up 0.6%. The U.S. private sector grew 1.4%. So uh, looking at super sector, five super sectors posted positive annual growth for Minnesota and six uh, super sectors uh, posted negative uh, change uh, over the year in Minnesota. So I'm going to start with the gainers again in the order of number of jobs gained. Uh, education and health services uh, gain more than 35,300 jobs. So that's a 6.2% growth rate for Minnesota. Um, outpacing the national rate of 3.8%. Uh, and growth was especially strong in healthcare and social assistance subsector, uh, which uh, we saw a 7% growth rate. And it was a uh, positive but more incremental change in the education services subsector, which grew 0.5%. The next super sector that gained jobs is uh, was government, uh, gained almost 21,500 jobs, up 5.1%. And that's more than twice the uh, U.S. Uh, growth rate of 2.1% for, for the super sector. And growth was healthy across all subsectors, um, except for U.S. Postal Service. Uh, we saw a decline there. And uh, growth was strongest in local government, uh, excluding education. So we saw 8.5% growth in that uh, subsector. Next is trade, transportation, and utilities. Uh, they gain almost 4,000 jobs, up 0.7% which is about a, a similar uh, rate as the U.S. Uh, of 0.6%. So retail trade grew 1.3%. Um, wholesale trade declined 
and transportation warehousing and utilities grew uh, 1.1%. Okay. And then the next super sector is uh, leisure and hospitality. They gain almost 1,900 jobs, up 0.7%. And uh, most of subsectors here grew, um, except for arts, entertainment, and recreation, uh, which is a subsector that we saw a decline uh, of more than 7%. And then lastly, other services gained uh, almost 1,200 jobs, up 1%. And um, all subsectors posted growth uh, under other services, and it's uh, growing at a similar rate as the US um, at of 1.1%. So those are our gainers. And then the six super sectors that lost jobs over the year, I'm also going to go in the order of number of uh, jobs. So professional and business services lost uh, more than 10,800 jobs, down 2.8% for uh, in Minnesota, while the US grew 0.4%. And um, highlights uh, highlights and declines were uh, management of companies and enterprises uh, saw a decline of almost 4%. Employment services had a decline of 8.6%. And computer systems design and related services um, saw a decline of 2.3%. The next super sector um, that lost uh, Jobs were manufacturing, uh, lost almost 8,500 jobs, down 2.6%. And the decline was driven by durable goods manufacturing, um, which uh, declined 4.2%, uh, while non-durable goods manufacturing uh, actually had a, a slight growth of 0.2%. And uh, the U.S. manufacturing super sector also declined, but on a, on a, smaller, um, a smaller scale. Financial activities is next. Uh, they lost almost 4,200 jobs over the year, so down 2.2%. And we saw losses in all subsectors here. Uh, nationally, uh, financial activities grew 0.4%. And then the next super sector is information. They lost more than 2,500 jobs, down 5.7% in Minnesota. And again, all subsectors saw decline uh, in Minnesota here. Um, the U.S. also saw a slight decline in this uh, information super sector of 0.2%. And then construction, we saw a small loss of 133 jobs, which is a 0.1% decline. Um, and the decline was in specialty trade contractors, which declined 1%. Um, and then for comparison, the U.S. construction super sector grew um, almost 3%. And then lastly, mining and logging lost 100. 121 jobs down 1.8% in Minnesota. And uh, this super sector also saw a decline uh, nationally. All right. Uh, and then lastly, I'm going to talk about wages and inflation. So average hourly wages for all private sector workers increased 21 cents um, over the month for Minnesota. So now it's uh, $38 um, per hour. And over the year, average earnings um, increased by $1.79, which is uh, almost 5%. Um, and nationally for the U.S., um, private sector wages increased 49 cents over the month and grew 4.6% over the year. And then uh, as the commissioner had mentioned, uh, inflation is 2.4%. Um, so we have seen consistent um, wage growth for both Minnesota and the U.S. Um, being uh, much higher than inflation for um, more than a year now. So that's good news. Um, and that's all I have, Commissioner, back to you. Very good. Thanks, Angelina. And so with that, I think we'd love to take any questions that folks may have. I see Max. Go ahead, Max. Hi, Commissioner and Angelina. Thank you for taking my question. I just wanted to zoom in a bit on um, manufacturing. We saw manufacturing down 2.6% um, over the year. Um, but we, I saw a report come out this week from the Economic Innovation Group that reported a slight increase from 2019 to 2023, showing a stronger recovery in manufacturing from the pandemic. So. Have we just lost those gains over the past year? Or I don't know if you can give a bigger um, bigger 
picture on what's happening with manufacturing since the pandemic? That is a great question. I would have to uh, do a, a sp specified analysis and email you, Max. Is that all right? Yeah, if you don't mind, I know it's a pretty specific question, but um, I just uh, was struck by the contrast between those two um, data points. Yeah, excellent question. I'll get to you. And I'll just add that, I mean, given that it is Manufacturing Month, we have uh, enjoyed celebrating and, and featuring some of the great uh, opportunities that are in manufacturing, advanced manufacturing in particular. Uh, I know that our staff have uh, taken part in a number of tours of some of the great manufacturers around the state, and I got to go to one uh, not too far from where I live, a new flyer that makes buses of various kinds. Thanks, Max. Anybody else have a question? Going once. Twice. <laughs> well, uh, we'll follow up on that one from Max, and then if anybody else thinks of one later, you're welcome to send it our way. But hearing none, if if uh, nobody objects, maybe I'll just bring us to a close with a little recap. So uh, thanks again for everybody joining. And uh, to summarize some of the details that you just heard, again, we had net job growth in nine of the last 12 months, adding 6,300 specifically in September. And overall, we see the economy in Minnesota remaining in a very strong place as we push into the final quarter of the year. Uh, job growth that's positive, unemployment that's low, wages outpacing inflation, labor force participation among the highest rates in the nation. And then I'm also excited to note that businesses are expanding and choosing to locate in our state while our exports also surge. In fact, I would invite you to keep an eye out for some of our recent as well as upcoming announcements related to some large business expansions that DEED has been able to partner on. So with that, thanks everybody. Have a great rest of the day. So long. Bye.